Hello everyone. In today's video, you will learn how to animate a wordmark logo in After Effects. I will also show how to prepare the logo in Illustrator before animating it in After Effects. You can download this free project file on my Patreon page. The link is in the description below. So, without further ado, let's get started. All right, so let's create our logo in Illustrator. So first, I select the text tool and type a logo name. Right now, its text color is black, so I change its color to white. Let's increase the size of this text a little bit. Then, I'm going to change the font. And for your information, I'm using this font for this wordmark logo. You can download this font by the link in the description below. Then I align this logo and then I select the text, right click and choose create outlines. Then once again, right click and this time I choose the ungroup option. It will separate each letter individually. Then I'm going to change this wordmark letter shape to give it a modern look. After that, I select Layer 2, then click this icon and then click on the hamburger icon. Now I choose Release to Layers Sequence. It will change each letter into individual layers. Then select all the layers and move them out to Layer 2. Now we can delete Layer 2 because it's an empty layer. Then save this file. And make sure when saving, save as an Illustrator file. That's it. We are ready to animate this logo in After Effects. Alright, so let's import our Illustrator layer which we created before. After importing, you can see this pop-up box. I recommend Import, Kind as Composition and Footage Dimension as Layer Size. After that, double-click on the composition to open it. And you can see in our timeline, we have several Illustrator layers. First, select all the layers. Right-click and choose Create Shapes from Vector Layer. This converts our Illustrator layers into shape layers. And now we can delete the Illustrator layers. After that, I delete the background layer and then I'm going to rename each layer one by one. Then I select Layer R which is our R letter, and I solo this layer. Then I duplicate it and rename the duplicated layer as R dash. After that, I unsolo the layer R and select the rectangle tool, then click this icon, which is a mask tool. And this tool helps us create a mask over the shape layer. I carefully create a mask like this to separate this part from letter R. After that, I unsolo this layer and solo the layer R, then select it, and then I'm using the pen tool to remove some of the vertex points like this to create this shape. So basically, we now have two parts of the letter R. The first one is this, and the second one is this part, so we can animate them separately. Now I hide all the layers except R and R dash. Then I click on the shy icon, and I lock them as well. After that, I click this icon to hide layers and now we can focus only on our R layers. After that, I add a new null object into the timeline. Then I rename this layer as R controller. Then I place this null object on the R letter like this. Then I select the R layers and parent them to our R controller. And now we can move them together. After that, I select the controller layer and move the time indicator to around one second and add a keyframe on the position property. Then, I go back to the first frame and align it to the center. I'm using the guideline to make this letter perfectly at the center. Now, I move those keyframes to the very end of this timeline for now. Then I select the layer R and solo this layer and lock the rest of the layers. And now I'm going to animate this part of the letter R. To animate this part, I'm using the path properties of this shape. Go to the search bar 
and search Path so we can see all of the path properties of this layer in the timeline. Then I add a keyframe for all of them. Drag this keyframe to around one second. Keep the time indicator at this point and change the path of the shape like this. Make sure you align it in the right proportion so it blends with this shape. Then I press Y to switch to the anchor point tool and then I change the anchor point like this. I place it at the bottom of the shape. Then I open the scale property and add a keyframe. And I click this icon to unlink scale properties. Then I change the Y value of scale to zero to get this kind of animation. Then I press U to see all the keyframes of this layer. I select the path keyframes and drag them forward a bit. Then I select the scale keyframes and easy ease them. After that, I go to the graph editor and change this graph like this. So we get a nice animation. Then I select all the path keyframes and adjust a bit. Let's check how it looks. It's nice, but we can make it better. So I copy the last set of path keyframes, move forward a bit, and paste it here. Then I go to the middle keyframe set, select the layer, and change the shape of this letter like this. If I play the animation, you can see we got an overshoot animation. After that, once again copy and paste those last keyframes and go to the third set of path keyframes and once again I adjust the shape of this letter. That's our final basic shootout animation preview. Let's make those keyframes Bezier keyframes to smooth out the animation. Then I adjust the keyframe positions to get a natural look. And now it looks much better than before. If you want to make some variations, you can select those keyframes and reposition them to get a different look of the shape animation. You can experiment by yourself and achieve different kinds of shootout animation. All right, we successfully completed this part and now we are moving forward. So I solo this layer and unsolo the R layer. Then I select the pen tool, deselect everything and change the color of the stroke as well. Now I carefully draw a line over this shape. I also increase the stroke width to cover this shape completely. Then I trim this layer at this point and rename this layer to R-Reveal. After that, I open its properties, add trim paths to this layer, set end to zero and click the stopwatch to create a keyframe. Then I move forward a bit and change the end value to 100. Now I change those keyframes to Easy Ease, open the graph editor and then change the graph like this. After that, I select the R- layer and change its track mat to R-Reveal. So we animated both layers and it's time to arrange them with the right timing. Scrub the timeline, I turn off the graph editor and at this point I drag the reveal layer to match the overall animation. Now it looks perfect. Alright, before animating the rest of the layers, I select the position keyframes of the R controller and drag them to this point. One point I forgot to tell you. We have to parent the R-Reveal layer to our controller layer 
So the reveal layer also moves with the controller layer. After that, I copy the first keyframe of position and paste it here and I adjust it. At this middle keyframe, I change the R position like this, so it will animate like this. Then I copy the last keyframe and paste it here. Then I go back to the third keyframe and change the R position once again. Then I adjust the gap between keyframes and easy ease them as well. Then I open the graph editor and change the graph like this. This way, the animation smooths out. After that, I place the time indicator at this point, then I unhide the rest of the layers. I also turn on their visibility and unlock them as well. First, I want to change their color to see the difference. Then I place the time indicator at the last keyframe and deselect everything. I select the rectangle tool and make sure fill is solid. And I turn off the stroke. Then I carefully create a rectangle shape over the letters like this. I rename this layer as Text Reveal and parent it to the controller layer so this layer moves with the controller layer. Then I select the rest of the text layers and change their track map to the Text Reveal layer. If I play the animation, you can see how this letter R reveals the layers. Then I select the rest of the letters, open their position properties and add keyframes. I go back to the second keyframe and change their position like this. I adjust a little and then change to Bezier keyframes. I change the speed graph like this to get a perfect seamless reveal But I see a little error at this point. So I select the text reveal layer and double click one of the vertex points to get this bounding box. I increase the width of this box and then adjust it. And now it perfectly reveals our text layers. But now all the text layers reveal at the same time. To get variation, I open position properties of the text layers and arrange their keyframes like this. Each letter comes out one by one like this and it looks much better than before. So that's how you can create a modern wordmark logo animation in After Effects. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.